In today's video, we use a variety of materials and techniques to make cool custom dice trays for tabletop wargaming. Well, hi, Wargaming peeps. It's Lee from SkirmishWarGames.com. Welcome to the channel. Today, Lynn and I are going to try our hand at making some DIY custom dice trays out of a variety of materials. As we've been traveling around the last few weeks, as we've been going to the thrift store or Walmart or wherever, and we've run across little bits and pieces that might make good raw materials for uh, dice trays, we've been picking them up and we've accumulated quite a pile. So now finally it's the day of reckoning. We're going to attack the pile and uh, start making our dice trays. And like a lot of things we do, this will be the first time we've tried this. So you're going to see uh, all the mistakes and all the victories uh, right here on the channel. And But hopefully we'll get some decent results and then there'll be some ideas that you can maybe put into your own custom dice trays. We thought before we get started with all that, we'll show you um, some of the materials we picked up and then we'll show you the process of building the trays and then uh, see what worked best or you know what sorts of different results we get. I noticed, Lynn, you were over there um, cutting stencils on the kitchen table. Tell me what, what's your plan? What are you going to be working with? I picked up some discount shirts at the thrift store and some discount um, frames as well. Okay, so we're looking at t-shirts and then picture frames because we saw someone online had done that. These were about a buck a piece and then these were about the same, right? What did yep. you pay for these? About a buck or 50 cents. Yeah, okay. So the plan there is to sort of stencil a design on the t-shirt before or after you put it in the frame. After, so it's flat. Okay. And then possibly the chamois? Underneath possibly to just give the... some padding. Yeah, okay. So it might be, if it all works out, um, a picture frame, some chamois. Was this just sitting in the garage? It Sit. was in my car. <laughs> okay, some chamois from the trunk of the car. And then a t-shirt. And then you might stencil on the t-shirt. And your plan is to kind of use what sort of... Uh, the fabric markers. Okay, so then maybe using these fabric markers on the stencil on the t-shirt to uh, create a custom design. Yeah, so. people had done it with airbrushes, but I don't really have an airbrush, so I figured I'd yeah. try the fabric markers since I had those. Okay, so I'm going to try um, maybe something a little bit different. When we were at Walmart, they had these little uh, fabric samples. I don't know what they were, but they They're weren't very quilting expensive. Quilting squares. Quilting squares, all right, there you go. And... They're just about the right size and they got various designs. This is kind of a Star Wars design. Actually, I think I got a pack of Star Wars ones. They had some comic book ones and it's kind of just some abstract ones. But my plan is, and I see there's some seams in there, maybe I'll have to iron those out, is to use a couple of these um, wooden trays, maybe put in some of this adhesive foam sheet in the bottom. So I might sand it, I might spray paint it, might put in some adhesive foam sheet and then have that covered in one of these quilting squares and see how that works out. And you got that real cool lid from a radar thing too. Yeah, so my uh, my plan here, this is just a cheap box. I don't know if I got it at Michael's or Hobby Lobby or somewhere, but that could make two of them. I pull the hardware off, then that might theoretically be two dice trays, about the right dimensions and height. And then this thing here, we just got that at a thrift store the other day. Um, I'll throw up a picture and show you what it was. It, it came from a box that had some sort of a radar control equipment. They had another one there that was intact that had the box with the radar equipment in it. And this one here was just the lid. That's all they had. You can see it says radar right on it. So I asked the guy at the store, I said, how much do you want for that? He said, well, someone must have bought the equipment and left the lid. So he says, if you buy something else, I'll give you the lid for free. So what I ended up buying was a copy of uh, <laughs> Planet of the Vampires by Atlas Comics, because that looked like a pretty good space opera type uh, illustration. And so I think I paid five bucks for that and got the lid for free. So. so these frames probably need to be disassembled, sanded. Not all of them are probably going to work, right? Right. And then this box, the same thing. I need to kind of pull the hardware off. Fill in the holes. This thing here, I'm kind of thinking I'm not going to paint it. I might not even sand it because it kind of has sort of a vintage Korean War slash, you know, analog feel to it. This thing's kind of in the way, but maybe I'll pull that off. So, And here's something else which may or may not come into play. I don't know. We were at Walmart and we saw these... Um, hex these, pattern. Yeah, this hex pattern. They call it chicken wire, actually. And it looks almost like you could make... You can almost make your own wargaming mat out of that. I mean, they're not uniform size, 
But they also might make kind of an interesting tray insert. So that is uh, kind of our rough plan going into this. Uh, we'll see how it all works out. So we're going to try to make, I don't know, three or four different trays and see how they turn out. And maybe there's some ideas that you can steal. So bear with us and we'll get to work on that and uh, show you how it all goes. So I started sanding my frames and this one I liked the way it turned out with just sanding it with the undercoat. So I decided to just seal it instead of paint it and use some of the gold glitter paint that we got as well over the top. Okay, I'm starting by pulling the hardware off these little uh, bare plywood boxes I got from the hobby shop. And then um, I'm going to fill in the holes and then sand them. And now I'm pulling the hardware off of the, uh, the radar control box lid. And I don't think I'm going to leave any hardware on there, but I am going to leave uh, the finish just the way it is because I kind of like it that way. So I'm cutting out the base for my long dice tray right now out of an old shirt. And I'm using the rotary cutter because it's easier to do that with that. And then once I'm done with the rotary cutter, I'll use a scissors to get any spots that didn't quite get cut. So I got on my computer and printed out a stencil on cardstock. And now I'm cutting it out with the Zacto knife. You would think that the spines on the dragon would be the hardest to cut out, but it's actually the letters that are the hardest, especially the A's and E's. So I tape my stencil onto my fabric material, and I'm going to use the Craft for All fabric markers to fill in the design and the letters. These fabric markers are designed specifically for fabric, and they come with a bunch of different colors in the set. So once the design is all colored in, you do need to leave it set for 12 to 24 hours, and then we do need to iron the design in so it sets. Instead of the chamois, I decided to use iron-on backing for my dice trays, so I'm going to cut them out to size and adhere them to my t-shirt material. After filling and sanding both halves of the wooden box, I'm going to spray paint one part red and then the other part dark walnut. So my long frame is getting a cream base coat. Then I'll give the long frame as well as the other frames a shot of that gold glitter paint. Coming back to my long frame, I'll give it some red and green glitter paint accents. While the frames are drying, we'll get everything else set so we can put it into the frames. We cut some cardboard to size and now we're gluing the fabric onto that cardboard. Now that those are all dry, we're ready to put them into the frames. Okay, now it's time for me to uh, measure and cut the foam sheet for my radar control box lid. And I'm going to do that using the rotary cutter. I think it's made for cutting fabric, but it uh, does a pretty good job on the foam sheet as well. Now testing the fit on what we've cut so far. Placing the adhesive backed foam in the center of our material and then removing the backing. The adhesive seems to have a lot of tack to it, so it should adhere to that material pretty well. Alright, applying the uh, adhesive foam to the fabric and pressing it down. Now we're cutting some excess material away from the corners and the sides uh, to make folding the fabric over the foam a little bit easier. Now it's time to apply some fabric glue after which we'll fold everything into place and that more or less completes our inset for the uh, radar control box lid. Here is the red hexagon pattern dice tray that we made using a uh, wooden lid from some sort of an old radar control box. As I said before I got the lid for free when I bought a five dollar Planet of the Vampires comic book so that's a pretty good deal. After I trimmed everything uh, I did end up with a little bit more gap around the edges than I would have liked, but uh, still turned out pretty good and it's glued in there industrially with the wood glue so it's not coming out. So let's give this sucker a test roll see how it works. That's a nice satisfying clatter. Let's do the bounce test. Oh, that escaped. Yeah. So for the most part, it shouldn't escape the barrier. Ooh, that's a good roll. I'm going to keep that. Now that everything is dry, it's time to unite the dragon and his glitter encrusted frame. Turn it into a custom wargaming dice tray. So this was the $1 picture frame from the thrift store. And then the paint was actually some holiday glitter paint that was also on sale at Walmart the day after Christmas. What would you pay, like $1.77 for two cans? Something like that. Three fifty for two cans. Three fifty for two cans. Okay, plus an old T-shirt, and then some of that iron-on padding material, backing material, and then a piece of cardboard, and that's it, pretty much. So, what do you think? You like it? I like it. That's a pretty trippy 
glitter frame you got on there. So let's go ahead and give it the dice test and see what kind of rolling action we get. Yeah, it's a nice cushiony sound, isn't it? It's kind of meditative. The wall is not terribly high, so if someone wants to get super aggressive, you'd probably... Go over the edge. Yeah, probably go over the edge. But you do get quite a bit of runway with this dice tray, so you can just kind of roll it to the end. Okay, here's our uh, cheap little wooden box that we got at uh, Michael's or Hobby Lobby, I forget which. Gave one a coat of walnut and one coat of red, and uh, now we're going to go ahead and insert some of our um, adhesive foam sheet, and then take some of these Star Wars uh, fabric pieces and then um, wrap that around and try to make that the inset for our dice tray. We'll see how that works. Okay, the plan for the two Star Wars dice trays is pretty much the same as the plan for the radar control box lid, so we'll blaze through it pretty quickly. So we've cut our foam. It looks like that's pretty close. Now we'll pick the section that we want out of these uh, Star Wars quilting squares and kind of cut that to size. Now we'll pull the backing off the adhesive foam sheet and then press the foam securely onto the material. Trim away unneeded material from the corners and the sides. Apply some fabric glue to the foam. Fold everything over and we should be just about done. Alright, looking good. Okay, so here is our um, two Star Wars themed dice trays. Per Lynn's suggestion and because the um, inserts seem to fit better in the particular frames, I did swap them out. So. This was originally going to be the insert for the black frame and vice versa. But I think they turned out pretty well, so what do you think? I like them that way. Give them a shake. That one's a little shorter in terms of the wall. But it's still higher than some of my other ones. Seems to, oh, that was good. That was a good roll. I'll keep that one. <laughs> for use at a later date. Yeah, you keep that one. That was a good one for you. Yeah, this one doesn't have quite as much bounce as some of the others. Which is good, it won't bounce out then. Okay, so we'll count that as a, uh, a modest success. I think that's uh, definitely workable. Okay, so that is the uh, end result of our great uh, dice tray extravaganza. So, what do you think? Some of them worked really well and some of them looked really cool. Your uh, radar one is probably the most functional because it's got the highest walls. Yeah, if I could do it again, I would do this one last. I'd probably get a slightly better fit with the mat because we sort of dialed that in by the end of the project. But still very usable, and I do kind of like the uh, the hex pattern. And this one kind of reminds me of some sort of a yeah, outer space pattern, you know, a nebula or something like that. And then you got your, your holiday uh, sparkle tone there on that one. So, yeah, well, pretty good. Well, we learned a few things. Um, I think we got at least a few dice trays here that can make it in the rotation, and uh, it was kind of a fun project. Well, okay, Wargaming peeps, thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed us Try to take some uh, thrift store items and some other stuff and turn it into uh, functional Wargaming dice trays. If you like our content, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Please give this video a big thumbs up, and visit us online at our website, skirmishwargames.com.